Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, what kind of watchmen are you for the Kingdom of Christ? A famous and well-known American magician, actor, musician, inventor, TV host, author, and self-confessed atheist once said, and I've always said, you know, that I don't respect people that don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and hell, and people could be going to hell or not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think that, well, it's not really worth telling them this because it would make it socially awkward? An atheist who think that people shouldn't proselytize? Just leave me alone. Keep your religion to yourself. How much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? I mean, if I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it, that that truck was bearing down on you, there's a certain point that I tackle you and this is more important than that pendulette. If that is the conviction of an atheist who refuses to believe in God, how is it possible that many Christians today do not have the conviction of what God is capable of doing in their lives and doubt in their hearts? Where is your true conviction, brother? The promise of salvation and eternal life is as real as the air we breathe and the light that shelters us daily. So why not share it? What is stopping you? In today's reflection, we read the scripture in the book of the prophet Ezekiel as follows. Now, son of man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them for me. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their ways, then they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their death. But if you warn them to repent and they don't repent, they will die in their sins, but you will have saved yours. Book of Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 7 to nine. The seriousness with which the Lord takes the issue of evangelizing is overwhelming. You and I have the responsibility to bear witness with our living, yes, but also to share our testimony with others. Otherwise, it is like being a tree that bears no fruit. And what did the Lord Jesus Christ say about trees that bears no fruit? is to be chopped down and thrown into the fire. There are those who selectively accept things written in the Old Testament as valid for our lives and other things as irrelevant to our times. They think that all of this was directed solely and exclusively at the people of Israel. Tell me, could we say that about the commandment, you shall not murder? 
Could we say that it is not necessary to honor your father and mother? So abusing them is acceptable? Or say that thighs and offerings are just in the past and are no longer valid? Of course not. So pairing the mandate given to the prophet Ezekiel and the Lord's command to his disciples to go and preach the gospel to the whole world must have the importance and validity it deserves. The Lord has placed evangelists, preachers, pastors, deacons, elders, brothers and sisters as sentinels or watchmen to warn unbelievers of what is coming. The scripture tells us that if we warn them and they decide not to act, then they will perish in their sins, but we will have fulfilled the commandment and therefore we will have rid our lives of that responsibility. But if we, out of fear, apathy, or cowardice, do not share that warning, then those will perish in the multitude of their sins, and then the Lord will claim that over our lives. We must be a light in the darkness, as individual Christians, and the church specifically is called to proclaim the gospel of peace, repentance, and salvation through the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. The church must proclaim that God through His Son offer us salvation and eternal life. So what is your conviction? What moves your actions? Do you live as if that has nothing to do with you? Do you remember the story at the beginning of this reflection? To share is to love. The Lord said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Again, as in other occasions, I remind you that the church was not established to get rich, to make a lucrative business of the gospel. You must not use the name of the Lord to ambitiously benefit yourself in any way. I again repeat as in other occasions too, money is not bad. The love of money is the root of all evils. If God bless you and you bless others with it, that is being grateful. In the same way, the Lord can bless the church to be used helping the poor, the needy, the widow, and to spread the gospel. Did you know that the scripture warned us about this practice of illicit enrichment? It is a reality in today's world. The Lord knows the mind and heart and the intentions of man. The Apostle Paul warned in his letter to Timothy, These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt and they have turned their backs onto the truth. To them a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 5 you must stay away from impostor merchants who simply want to get rich using the gospel. The existence of the church is solely and exclusively to bring souls to Christ through the preaching of the gospel. You are part of that plan. As a child of God, we have the calling to share the good news of salvation. Let's do a little comparison and get a spiritual benefit. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? I want us to see a point of view that we may very rarely consider. When that young man was in the most precarious and humiliating moments, he wanted to eat the food of the pigs. Just imagine those animals in their pig pen pigsty, hog pen, or piggery, as are known in some countries. Have you ever been to one? That unpleasant emanation of nauseating smells, the dirty conditions they like to be in while wallowing in the mixed mud. Could you visualize that condition? Could you accept living in those deplorable living conditions? These animals, unless they are being raised on farms where they are confined and fed in a specific way, they are animals that consume anything they find, including human feces. 
I visited one of those places in Brazil. The smell was unbearable and I tried to hold my breath as long as possible. Going back to the story of the prodigal son, what did the wayward son do? He reflected that in his father's house he had everything, decent clothing, a decent roof, and decent food. The young man returned to his father and asked to be accepted into the humble position of a servant. But you know that there are many who being in this state of perdition, instead of going back to their father to ask for mercy and forgiveness, they go to their father to ask for more money because the money he had given him has run out. They think that Christianity is a means of obtaining wealth. They think that getting rich is equivalent to devotion. The tragedy in all this is that these people do not care that humanity is headed for hell. What matters to them is to see how they benefit to achieve their luxuries they covet. These people tell you that if you are not rich, it's because you are not blessed and God has some spiritual issues against you. And perhaps there are some others who prefer to stay and eat the food of the pigs and do not give their arm to twist to humiliate themselves and seek their Heavenly Father. What a great sadness, no? When the blessing and the love of God are within the reach of a prayer of repentance. They are within the reach, a change of heart as far as living in this world is concerned. We see people who prefer to wallow in the dirty and rotten mud of sin, eating the disgusting garbage that the evil one throws at them for food. There is a verse in the scripture that describes it very graphically and tells us like this. They prove the truth of this proverb. A dog returned to its vomit, and another says, A washed pig returned to the mud. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22. It is terrible, but our job is to make them see that their path leads them to death. We must fulfill our obligation and in gratitude that one day we reach God's favor and speak to them of God's love through Jesus Christ, of His offer of salvation and that in the house of our Heavenly Father we can enjoy the delicacies of life that He offers us, a spiritual nourishment that will lead us to grow with dignity. We must proclaim what the psalmist David said, Your commandments give me understanding. No wonder I hate every false way of life. Psalm 119 and verse 104. On February 3, 1943, an American warship packed with troops called the Dorchester was transporting more than 900 soldiers and military personnel across the North Atlantic. A German submarine spotted the convoy and fired three torpedoes at the ship. Only one hit the target, but the explosion below the waterline fatally damaged the ship. In the cold darkness, the crew was ordered to abandon ship. There were not enough lifeboats for all the men, nor enough life jackets. Four chaplains aboard the ship that night helped comfort those injured in the blast and those who feared death was coming. As the ship nearly sank, the chaplains removed their life jackets and handed them to four young soldiers who had none. They gave their own lives to save others. In that tragedy, 674 of the 904 soldiers on board lost their lives. The heroic gesture of those chaplains inspired a nation and Congress voted for a special posthumous medal in their honor. Most of us are not called to give our lives physically, but there are many people out there who need our help. The people around us who do not know the Lord need us to give them the gospel of salvation. 
How many have you shared with already? My dear friend and brother, each passing day brings us closer to the end of time. Although we do not know the exact date of His return, we must live as if today is the last day before His return, or the end of our short life. If you feel lucky to have found the only way of salvation given to mankind, you can show your gratitude to God by sharing it with those who still wander in this life without hope and without faith. It is the least we can do in obedience to God. It is what the Lord expects. God of all goodness and mercy, awaken in us the desire to share the love that you have poured out unto us with those who are heading towards death, not only material but also spiritual. Encourage our hearts to be grateful for the kindness you have showered on us. Destroy that outer layer that has covered our heart that prevent us from feeling the pain of the souls that wander without Christ in this world. We pray this in humility and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen.